Your Excellency, I welcome you in India visit and thank you so much for giving me your time to be on India visit. Your Excellency, you have been here almost two and a half years. In this period, what difference you feel between 2011-16 and now? Well, uh, India and Denmark have traditionally enjoyed uh, friendly relations. In fact, our uh, historical contacts go back 400 years when the first uh, Danish ships reached uh, Trankebar. Uh, Denmark actually played a very important role as a catalyst in our white revolution uh, and also in the 1990s when India started developing wind energy, Denmark played uh, an important uh, contribution. The first uh, experimental wind turbine uh, came from Vestas, the Danish company. Uh, they also helped to develop a wind atlas for in India in the 1990s. Uh, however, uh, due to uh, the extradition of Niels Hawk at Kim Davy uh, issue, there was a freeze in relations between 2011 to 2016. Uh, during this period, uh, there was no contact between the governments and uh, the ministries. So, uh, when I came here, uh, we had just lifted the freeze uh, on uh, ministerial visits and just prior to, to my arrival, three Danish ministers had visited India. Uh, shortly after I came, an, an invitation was extended to the Danish foreign minister to visit India in November 2017. And he met our external affairs minister. He also called an honorable prime minister. Uh, the Danish foreign minister was uh, very was received in a very positive and friendly manner. And uh, soon he came back with the feedback from his visit that India would like to restore uh, friendly relations with Denmark. And Denmark being a small country, this message was quickly conveyed to the political and business elite. Since then, we have not looked back. Uh, a major milestone in the relations uh, was the first ever India Nordic Summit in Stockholm in April 2018 when uh, Honorable Prime Minister met uh, the former Danish Prime Minister Lars Loke Rasmussen. Uh, in fact, four important MOUs and agreements were signed during the summit uh, which helped to uh, spark uh, of the government to government cooperation. What we have managed to do is to establish a very good uh, framework for uh, cooperation and dialogue between various ministries of government of India and Denmark in the last two and a half years. We have signed 13 important MOUs and agreements. We've also uh, established nine joint working groups uh, and they have met in areas where Denmark has uh, expertise and technology which is highly relevant to India, such as renewable energy, shipping and ports, uh, science and technology, animal husbandry and dairy, uh, food processing, uh, urban development, digitization and so on. What is very interesting is that these nine joint working groups have met 17 times in the last two and a half years. In fact, the joint working group on renewable energy has met three times. So we have now uh, very good cooperation between our ministries. Uh, in addition, there has been a vastly expanded increase in the number of business delegations which have been visiting uh, the, two, the two countries. A number of Danish SMEs have stepped up their activities in India and there have been at least four to five uh, delegations of SMEs from Denmark which have visited India. Uh, when you talk about small, uh, small businesses, you see when we have trade delegations to India, normally it goes to very big firms which are already established in India like uh, LNT and uh, uh, I mean all the companies were already established in India for the last 40, 50 years. So what is scope you see for the small industries from Denmark who could have relations in India? Well, the Danish economy is composed of about 20 to 25 very large companies which are operating on a global scale. These are companies like Maersk, AP Moller, Vestas, Danfoss, Grundfos, Carlsberg, Lego, Arla and so on and so forth. I find that most of these companies have a big presence in India and they have been there for a number of years. In fact, a company like F.L. Smith 
uh, has been in India for almost a century. However, the backbone of the Danish economy other than these global firms are the SMEs and there are about 10,000 Danish SMEs. Most of them have are specializing in production of some niche product or some niche service. And although about 180 Danish companies are present in India, I think the next step is to bring more of these SMEs to India. Now fortunately what we have done is to encourage these SMEs to form joint ventures or to enter into transfer of technology agreements with Indian companies because as a small SME while they may have a very good product, it may not be possible for them to actually set up a factory in India and produce, manufacture, try and enter the Indian market. So there are a number of successful examples of such JVs and uh, transfers of technology and I would encourage Danish companies to choose this path because the Indian market is still a young market. There is a lot of growth which will come in the next few decades. Sir, uh, what are the areas of sectors, areas of sector where Danish and Indian companies can cooperate together? Well, although Denmark is a small country, I think it has followed a strategy of developing expertise at a global level in certain niche areas. Uh, and that is where you see companies like Vestas, which is the largest manufacturer of wind turbines in the world. Uh, you have uh, Lego, which has a unique uh, footprint for making toys. Uh, you have Carlsberg, which is one of the most popular brands for beer in the world. Uh, you have Grundfos, which is the largest manufacturer of smart pumps. You have Danfoss, which is very well established in industrial cooling. Now, all these companies, because they have developed their expertise in certain specialized areas, they are able to contribute uh, to India's development. Most of them have large uh, manufacturing facilities in India. And, and I'll give you a couple of examples that uh, India, for instance, has emerged as a hub for the export of wind blades and wind uh, turbines. And both Vestas and LM Wind has each has several manufacturing facilities in India. So a lot of these wind blades and turbines are being exported from India. Similarly, you have a company like Novo Nordisk, which manufactures insulin. And as you know, India has a very large number of diabetes patients. And Novo Nordisk has a, a technical tie-up with an Indian company, which actually makes the uh, insulin. But uh, it has about a 60% share in the Indian market. So similarly, Denmark also has a lot of expertise in sectors like dairy, uh, where I mentioned earlier that it made an input, important contribution to our white revolution. Uh, it is very good in fisheries. Uh, it has over the years developed very good best practices for waste management. And this is an area that we are working on. Danish companies are involved in cleaning of Indian rivers uh, and also rehabilitation of some old waste uh, sites. So in this way, Denmark is helping India to meet the SDG goals, which is one of the key priorities of India. Uh, and also uh, through the development of wind energy, different uh, solar wind hybrid models uh, to try and help meet the Paris Agreement goals. So what initiative embassy has taken to increase the social and cultural contact between people to people? Well, for various reasons, uh, the cultural footprint that uh, India has had in Denmark was rather limited uh, when I came. What we have tried to do is to take uh, a number of initiatives to involve the Indian diaspora uh, and other organizations in increasing the number of cultural activities. And I would like to mention some of these. Uh, dance troops uh, from India would traditionally take part in the Copenhagen World Music Festival. But in addition, we have uh, brought in a number of troops uh, which have performed uh, Kathak, uh, classical Indian music uh, and also folk dance. In fact, uh, last year uh, for the Holi festival, we had brought in an excellent uh, Kuchipuri troupe of uh, Bhavna and Yamini Reddy, which really left a very deep imprint on the audiences here. Uh, in addition, because Indian cuisine is very popular in Denmark, so we've organized a number of food festivals and I must express appreciation, appreciation for the various Indian organizations who have organized uh, these food festivals often by taking initiative on their own 
where most of the people who have come have been Danes. What we have also tried to encourage is growing interest in Indian films. <coughs> and we've organized a number of film festivals. Last year we organized a regional film festival which focused on Marathi films and it drew an appreciative audience not only from Denmark but also neighboring Scandinavian countries. Later we screened uh, movies, very popular movies like Uri, The Surgical Strikes and we also tied up with Nordisk film to screen Hotel Mumbai. And I must tell you that Hotel Mumbai was screened across uh, this, the Nordic countries and almost 50,000 people saw this film. It was after many years that an Indian film was being screened uh, in movie halls across uh, Scandinavia. So this also helped to encourage people in Denmark to know about the grave threat that India has faced for several decades from terrorism because sometimes the people in Scandinavia don't really know about the problems that India faces. Now, last year was uh, the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi and embassies across the world had organized a number of programs to celebrate the season. And I would like to mention that we had some very successful programs, uh, including with the participation of Danes. One such event was the singing of the Bhajan Vaishnav Janto by artists from all over the world. And from Denmark, we had a very well-known singer called Anita Lerche. And with the beautiful backdrop of Copenhagen, she sang a beautiful version of Vaishnav Janto. Vaishnav Janto, tine kahi ye je, peeda parai jane re. Vaishnav Janto. Later, we also, uh, organized programs like screening of Gandhiji's life on historical monuments in Copenhagen. We organized a cycling event, cycling for all, uh, several vegetarian food festivals were organized. One of the most successful events that I felt uh, evoked a very positive response was an outreach to schools and universities where I have over the last year or so uh, gone and spoken about the life of Gandhiji, his impact on India uh, and also about uh, India's rise as a major economic and political power to high schools and universities and we have done this to about 20 uh, universities and high schools and at each place we were very warmly received and there were more than 100 to 150 students. So we've done a very large outreach and we also planted trees in honor of Gandhiji at each of the venues. We've also commissioned a painting of Gandhiji uh, in Alborg and we've organized several seminars. So all in all there, there, has, there have been a lot of cultural activities uh, which the embassy has held and uh, the target is not just the Indian diaspora but also the local Danes who live here. Denmark has uh, just opened a cultural house in Delhi. Can you say a little bit more about it? Yes, uh, you see Denmark has uh, only two cultural institutes uh, in Asia. The first was in China which was opened many years ago. So their proposal for setting up a cultural institute in India has been pending for some time but we, we were able to get the approvals and uh, last year when the former Danish Prime Minister Lars Loke Rasmussen visited India, the Danish Cultural Institute uh, was inaugurated and this year they were planning to organize the 400th anniversary of 
the Danish ships landing in uh, Tranquebar in a very big way and they are still planning to do that uh, although their efforts to some extent have been curtailed by the pandemic. It will certainly help to strengthen cultural cooperation between the two countries. About uh, vibrant Gujarat, I think Denmark participated in all the events of uh, vibrant Gujarat and I think you were there last time also. Yes, uh, it is notable that uh, Denmark has uh, participated regularly in Vibrant Gujarat and they were partner country last year, uh, the last time in 2019 when the Danish Prime Minister led a large business delegation uh, and it has helped them to uh, encourage their companies to do business in India. It has also, uh, even during the crisis, they continue to participate in Vibrant Gujarat. Is there any cooperation between India and Denmark during this period of Corona crisis? Yes, well, we have ensured uh, at the embassy that uh, the cooperation continues. In fact, in some ways, it has actually intensified uh, during the pandemic. Uh, firstly, Denmark has been one of the countries which has been quite successful in containing the spread of the pandemic. And we uh, had regularly exchanged uh, best practices to what strategies Denmark is following uh, to contain the pandemic. We've also initiated a dialogue at very high levels between Danish uh, scientists and epidemiologists with their Indian counterparts. Uh, on the 12th of May, India held its first ever joint commission in a virtual mode and that country was Denmark on the 12th of May. It was held between the external affairs minister and the Danish foreign minister and both ministers uh, did an overview of the entire gamut of bilateral cooperation. And at the end of it, our external affairs minister put out a tweet that uh, did my first virtual JCM, uh, couldn't be with a better partner. So that shows the warmth which is, which is now there in the relationship. Uh, shortly thereafter, on 14th of May, uh, Honorable Prime Minister had a teleconversation with the Danish uh, Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen and this was again held in a warm and friendly atmosphere. And uh, both the External Affairs Minister uh, and Honorable Prime Minister have endorsed the ambition of building a green strategic partnership between India and Denmark. And that shows that we have indeed traveled a long distance in improving our relationship in the last few years. It gives me great pleasure to pay tribute to India on this very special day when you and with you, all of us, are commemorating and celebrating the 17 years of the first constitution. When it was adopted, it was among, if not the most liberal constitution of its time, promising universal right to vote for all adults, positive discrimination in favor of local castes and tribes, who had been disadvantaged for centuries. Equal rights for women and religious freedom for all communities. India has come a very long way since then. I witnessed that with my own eyes during my visit to India earlier this year in my capacity as Prime Minister of Denmark. It was amazing to see what India has achieved in few decades in terms of, yes, almost all things, and in particularly, and most spectacular, the fact that you have lifted millions of people out of poverty. During my visit, I had the honor to meet Prime Minister Modi. It was a very fruitful and constructive meeting where we, among other things, agreed to relaunch the historic India-Danish cooperation in many areas and particularly in the field of greening our economies. Fighting climate change and prove that it can be done and it can go hand in hand with prosperity and economic growth is a common challenge. And to be successful, we need closer bilateral and international cooperation. In that regard, it was a true pleasure to inaugurate the new Danish Embassy in New Delhi and the newly established Danish Cultural Institute in the same city. It is a clear sign 
of an enhanced and even closer relation between our two countries. India and Denmark are very, very different countries and different when it comes to size and population. But we share the same vision of the world being so much better if we cooperate and concentrate on bridge building instead of building walls between us. We believe, and I look at India as a truly living proof of that, that today is much better than yesterday and that tomorrow can be even better. I send my best and sincere regards to Prime Minister Modi and I wish him and all his fellow citizens a memorable Constitution Day. What role Indian diaspora has played between India and Denmark to strengthen the relations? Well, the Indian diaspora is about 15,000 strong in Denmark. It's about 11,000 Indian passport holders and about 4,000 who have acquired Danish passports. And they've come here many years ago. Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, the Indian diaspora has virtually doubled in the last 9 or 10 years. Most of the Indians who have come in the last 10 years are professionals, mainly in the IT sector and some in the financial services and renewable energy sectors. There are about uh, 20 Indian companies here and mainly again in the IT and renewable energy sector. They have been expanding steadily in the last 10 years and they have been doing much more business than they were. The Indian diaspora is one of the highest tax paying uh, communities. Uh, they have established a strong reputation for their professionalism, uh, for their commitment to work, for being highly disciplined, and they are greatly valued. In fact, uh, Denmark is looking for Indian professionals who form the second uh, most important origin from outside the EU. So the Indian diaspora is also uh, playing an important role in spreading the message about India, uh, India's successful efforts in various fields such as science and technology, economic development. Also during the COVID pandemic, we've had some useful projects where, for instance, one of the Indian NRIs uh, has helped come up with material, with nano protection, which can provide additional protection for PPEs and face masks. And several Indian companies have already started producing this material. So what do you see future of relations between India and Denmark? I think the future is extremely bright. Uh, the main areas, as I mentioned earlier, we now have a framework for maintaining the momentum in the relationship. There is great interest in the ministries in Denmark and also in India to continue this dialogue. Uh, on the business level, there is much more interaction and intensification of visits. What we've done during the pandemic is to organize a lot of online interaction, which earlier was not possible because people would wait for a physical meeting. But I should tell you that almost every week we've been organizing a couple of webinars and this has helped to at least start a dialogue between many Indian companies uh, with their Danish counterparts. The main areas I think where Denmark will be able to make a huge contribution is in development of wind energy in India, uh, also other models for integrating renewable energy into our power grid, in best practices in urban areas, in waste management, uh, management of water resources, uh, a circular economy, development of a circular economy because Denmark has evolved over the years a lot of best practices and technologies where the products are recycled, repackaged and uh, I certainly think that uh, there is increasing uh, congruence, increasing similarity of views on regional and international issues and we see that Denmark has stood by India uh, for India's membership at various forums such as the NSG, the MTCR, other non-proliferation regimes, and also for our membership to the Arctic Council. Any message you want to give to Indian community or small industries in Denmark? Well, my message is that 
uh, India is a very large and rapidly growing uh, power. Uh, please do convey to your Danish uh, counterparts uh, and also your friends that they should look at India. India has a bright future and uh, we hope to reach, uh, become a $5 trillion economy by 2025 and again a $10 trillion economy by 2032 which is not so far away and uh, there are many many opportunities in India and the Indian diaspora can play a valuable role in helping to build bridges and connectivity between uh, Danish organizations and Indian institutions. I thank you so much Your Excellency for being with India Vision and thank you once again. खुशियाँ में तो गुजरे सुहानो सफर तो हिंचे मिला 